first story of the day. Um, and it's a very interesting story considering that we are looking at a, a good but bad situation, right? A good but bad situation, depending on how you want to view it. There is a drop in concealed carry licensees. I know as an LTC instructor, which is just a license to carry here in the state of Texas. You know, I have three kids. I have three people signed up for a class today that I'm going to be teaching. Uh, the most I've had is four in a class. I've seen some people with 12 or 13, um, but that's not a bad thing. And we can talk about the idea. It's about permitless carry rising. Now you can be a fan of permitless carry or not. We can certainly have the debate. Leave, let me know in the description box, not the description box, in the comment section down below your thoughts on open carry versus concealed carry. Which one do you think is a better option? I like it because people have options. I think it's a great idea. Um, do I think people should probably go out, get trained and, and get an LTC or CHL or whatever you want to call it anyway? Yes. And not just because I'm a firearm instructor, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a secret. If you get your LTC in the state of Texas, you don't have to have a NICS background check where they call the feds. They don't, you don't have to do that. You can just hand them your LTC and your license and you're good to go. That's it. But let's take a look at this and we'll we'll examine it a little bit more by the great Cam Edwards of BearingArms.com. For the first time since Dr. John Lott of the Crime Prevention Research Center started keeping tabs on the number of active concealed carry licenses across the country, he's seen those numbers decline. According to Lott, this year's figures dipped half a percentage point from 2022's record high of 21.8 million. At first glance, that seems surprising given that eight states that were formerly May issue are now moved, however reluctantly, to the shall issue regime, at least in theory, of course, the, the legislatures in those um, states are working tirelessly with sensitive place law and training requirements and everything else they can try to do to try and make your life miserable. Uh, so they're still working on that. But according to the law, there's a simple explanation, and that's the rise of permitless carry. Now, you have a God-given right to keep and bear arms. That's one of the things I absolutely believe. You have that right to, to, and it's enshrined in 44 of the 50 state constitutions and federally by saying the, the government, right? That's the whole purpose of the Second Amendment. The government can infringe on your God-given right to keep and bear arms according to, to our current court precedent. So I think it's absolutely true. You want to you wanna carry, that's fine. You have a God-given right to do so, and you should. You absolutely should. But the idea is you should be proficient with your weapon uh, just because you have the ability to do so. Doesn't mean you should skip out on training. Not It doesn't have to be an LTC. It could be handgun coaching. It could be tactical carbines and, and defensive pistol training. You should be as up to date as possible with the things that you're using. Back into the article. There are now 27 states where lawful gun owners can carry without the need for a government-issued permission slip, though every one of those states still offers a carry course. Those states, like Texas, a license to carry allows the license holder to carry in certain sensitive places off limits to those without a permit. But licenses also need licensees also may are also needed in many cases for those who want to carry in other states that require a license and recognize out-of-state permit, i.e., reciprocity. That's that's another reason I see people taking the course. When I ask them, "What do you? Why are you taking the course?" You know, I, I of course I live, I work near a military base, so a lot of guys are coming from Louisiana and different places, and they just want to be able to drive back and forth to their home uh, with the added layer of protection that a license gives. So that's another reason why did they do it. Um, let's see. As Lott explains, the decline of active carry license across these United States can be attributed to those states where permits have now become optional. Because of these constitutional carry states or permitless carry states, Texas, they don't call it constitutional carry, they call it permitless carry. The concealed carry permit number does not paint a full picture of how many people are legally carrying across this union. It's not a nation doctor, but you know, nitpicking here. Many residents still choose to obtain permits so they can carry in other states and have reciprocity agreements. While permits are increasing in non-constitutional carry states, 
Permits fell even more in the constitutional carry ones, even though more people are clearly carrying in those states. For whatever reason, and once again, it is an option for you to have. You do not need to have it, but there are advantages to it. Interestingly, five of the six states that have more than one million active carry license are permitless carry states, Alabama, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, and Texas. That's also because on the surface, oh, it's permitless carry. But there are things like in Texas, 30 out 5, 30 out 6, 30 out 7. Um, even though public universities are supposed to be open for carrying, there are um, places that can be sectioned off. It's not as cut and dry as you would think it is on the surface. Uh, let's see. But with a Democratic governor and a closely divided state legislature, permitless, permitless carry is off the table for the foreseeable future in the Keystone State. Pennsylvania, uh, I, I hate to say it, there are some really great people in Pennsylvania, but that state is going to be pretty much the same as New York or California within the next 10 years. I mean, if you already look at the cities, it's an absolute mess. Now, I can actually step back and say, you know, glass houses with rocks stones glasses houses because austin houston and dallas are just as bad but the fact of the matter is pennsylvania is in a really bad spot with its supreme court and the state supreme court and its governor so anyway not too political here let's get back into the story although alabama is one of 27 permitless carry states a lot also found as the highest percentage of active concealed carry holders based on population with more than 25 percent of the residents possessing a carry license Indiana isn't far behind with 23% of the population holding those carry licenses. Uh, Cam was surprised to see Colorado in third place with 16.5%, by far the highest rate found in a blue state. Of course, Colorado is such an asterisk when it comes to these kinds of statistics because outside of Boulder and Denver, is it really a blue state? Is it really? I mean, that's that's just how politics work, but still. Back into the article, according to lot, excluding New York and California, about 10% of the adult population in these United States has a permit to carry. If you include those formerly May issue states, which have erected numerous barriers to lawful carry in the wake of the Bruin decision, sensitive places, all these other kinds of things. The percentage drops to about 8.4%, still a healthy number, but evidence that the right to carry is being artificially suppressed in those states which is not a shock because the left's total goal when it comes to your God-given right to keep and bear arms is your disarmament. That's what 100% what it is. Lot also found that active concealed carry licenses rose in Oregon and Michigan last year. Both states have seen a major push for gun control in Oregon. Voters narrowly, and I say narrowly, approved a permit to purchase law and magazine ban last November. Laws have been put on hold by judges in Harlan County, but still spurred interest in gun ownership in general. Michigan Governor Gretchen Wicken, which Whitmer, meantime, signed several gun control bills into law this year after Democrats took control of the state legislature last November. And while new gun laws are meant to crack down on legal gun owners, it looks like they may have prompted some Michiganders to start exercising their right to bear arms for the first time. So if you just look at Lot's top number and a lot of numbers, people will look at, oh, no, the permit, you know, concealed carry licenses have dropped. That's a bad thing. It could be. Um, you do a little bit of a deeper dive into the details. It's a encouraging sign of the latest report. And of course, the um, Federalist in me, I don't even want I don't want to even say libertarian, but I guess I could. The anti-government streak in me says I shouldn't have to have a permit to exercise a God-given right. So to those people, in my opinion, who exercise it, rock on. I think it's great. The only thing I would ask is that you just get some additional training. Maybe you already have, and it's just falling on deaf ears. But, you know, part of me is like, great, I'm glad people aren't asking the government for permission to exercise the, the natural right that is bestowed on them. Slightly few Americans may be carrying with a concealed carry license, but that doesn't mean that the overall number of Americans bearing arms has declined at all. Like that dramatic pause there. <laughs> um, now I've had mine pre, pre the Bruin or pre LTC here in Texas. So it's, I already went through the course. I went through the payment, went through the training. I might as well just keep it because um, the government already has it. But the idea here is that 
and I tell people when they ask me, when they come into the store I work at, hey, should I get a license to carry? And I say, well, it's up to you. Do you think you need one? Uh, are you traveling a lot? Because that's a big thing, the reciprocity. Do you buy firearms often? Because it can help you go quicker through the gun buying process if you go to a store. Um, a great example is if you have an LTC here in the state of Texas and you somehow forget your firearms in a bag and you go into the secured area of an airport, you know, the TSA area, um, they won't put you in handcuffs. They'll still fine you and walk you out, but they'll give you the option. It's a small defense against prosecution, not huge. It's a small defense against prosecution. And that's what, what people are seeing now. Will we ever see a rise in those? Probably not. But I, but then again, I don't mind it.